Been a bit of a sad day in the workshop today. The batteries that I used to power the robot are broken. And batteries are expensive. I just wish there were some batteries lying around the house that had decent discharge rates, decent quality, that I could just pop in the robot and get moving. I can find some of those. Oh, we're back in business. Let's go make something awesome. So the secret sauce in all of this is something I just bought off Amazon for $14. What this is, is an adapter that goes on the top of a power tool battery and converts it into, I guess, a terminal. So I can just slide this in. And now those two wires are live and they have power. So these are Makita 18 volt batteries. So let's make sure they are. Seventeen point four, not bad. So my aim is to take two of these batteries, join them in series, and then that will give me um, the thirty-six volts that I need to power the O drive. So let's put that to the test. We'll open up the second one. There we go. And then what I want to do is join these two in series. So I'm going to use one of the Wago connectors that I tend to use for prototyping. These are just little lever connectors, so I can just say, let's get this one over here, drop it in, snap my lever down, and then I can use that and go into here. Snap that lever down, and of course I can take these out at any time and they're completely undamaged. Great for prototyping. Of course, I'll drop a link to both these, the connectors, everything in the video on the video description, so you can grab hold of these if you want to. Okay, so next I'm going to put the batteries in and we're going to see what voltage we get. So we're hoping for somewhere around 36 volts. 37. That'll do for me. Okay, the next step is to connect these batteries up to the O-Drive, and then we'll see if we can make it move. So take the batteries off first. Now I'm using Makita batteries, but of course you could use any batteries you desire. I've seen these same adapters out for DeWalt power tools, Milwaukee. I'm sure if you live in other parts of the world there'll be something out there for you to use as well. Now, word of warning, this is the power input for the O-Drive, not this. Okay, so I'm going to plug both of these in and what I'm looking for is for the little power LED on the O-Drive to light up, and there it is. So we have power. So the next stop is for me to get this into um, go on to the Raspberry Pi and we'll see what voltage the Raspberry Pi reads. Okay, first things first, let's load up the O drive tool. Okay, we're connected to the O drive, so next I want to read the voltage from the O drive using the Pi. So let's see if we get our 37 volts. Look at that, 37.2. So I'm pretty happy with that. We can work with that. Let's see if we can make something move. So let's bring in the electronics. You can see I've got one of my wheel modules here. So first thing I want to do is do an encoder search so that we can locate the index position. So that's searching for the offset now. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into closed loop control.
And finally, I'm going to make sure it knows we're going to control it by velocity. So let's send some speed commands to this now. Let's get things rolling. Let's input velocity one. Nice, we're moving. Let's ramp it up. Two. Three. It's looking good. Okay, we're at five already. It's working really well. Let's keep going. Wow, okay, this is looking really good. This is looking strong. Those batteries are really packing a punch. Up to 13, 14, 15. Well, I think I'm going to call it a day here. Really, we'll call 16 the maximum. I don't think the robot needs to go much faster than this. Let's start backing it off before something flies away. Slowly ramp it down. I'm actually really impressed. These batteries are giving me a lot of current to play with here. Check the voltage then on the bus. Let's see how much the voltage has gone down. Hoping it stayed about the same as it was before. Look at that. Still 37 volts. That's fantastic. We've got a viable solution here. These batteries really work. So does it work? Yeah, seems to work great. I'm going to assemble the robot soon and we'll give it a bit of an endurance test and see how well things work, but to be honest, I'm pretty pleased. I think I can actually power the robot with these Makita batteries and not have anything to worry about. I could put these batteries through a lot more tests. I could do load tests, endurance tests, torque tests, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assemble the robot and I'm going to go see how well it works. These batteries are easily available. You can get them from most hardware stores. You can get the chargers, the batteries, everything you need to get going. You may even find that you have some at home or somebody else has some at home that you can borrow and it's really cheap to get going. To be honest, I, when I buy batteries for robots, they're expensive. Same with any project like this, electric skateboards, you're going to pay upwards of $200, sometimes over $300 for a battery, whereas I can go buy a double pack of Makita batteries for less than 100 bucks, and they seem to work really well. It remains to be seen if they stack up to the performance of those more expensive batteries, and I'm sure they discharge quicker, I'm sure, um, I'm sure they're not quite as good, but they're cheap when they're available. Most people have these at home. If they've got a power tool, you can convert it and use it to power your robot. The cost of entry for robotics just got lower. It costs enough money to buy the O-Drive, to buy the motors, to buy everything in between. Why spend money on a battery? Looks like this is going to work. So I'll get back to you when I put the robot together and I'll show you how well this works, but so far so good. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.